My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Elohim Adonai Spirit of the warrior is a warrior spirit. 
is about to mantle this person. <laughs> we have different dimensions in the spirit. They are those who are fighters. War for Abba. They are the frontline men of the kingdom. And somebody is about to be recruited. I see a scepter stretched in the spirit. And it's a, an ordination for a warrior. It's not for many people. There are different kinds of impartation. But when God raises warriors, these ones are fighters. He keeps them in front of the battle. They stand where the battle is fiercest. But there are equipping, there are ordination, there are powers that God puts on them. And so right now, I come to you as one sent of God. A warrior in my own right in the spirit. And as that scepter stretches, I decree wherever that warrior is, not many, one man standing for God. Now, come out. Help out. will begin to rise. They will invent things. They will create things. They will download things from the spirit realm that eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has occurred to the heart of man. This is the time that we are in. There are many things happening. There are angels that have never been released before from the foundation of time. God is beginning to allow them. Some are coming to the earth for the first time and they are looking for, for creatures of eternity. Men that have the bodies of, of the celestial to faction them. Oh man, I wish you know what is happening. <laughs> I can't teach. But hear me. Strange things are happening. But those of you that have access, you know what I'm saying. The same way you are seeing wickedness being invented, that's how dimensions of glory will come out of light. It's not a function of human ingenuity. They are beings. Listen, if you study the book of Revelation, you will discover that there are certain principalities that since they fell, they have been in the waters. At the end of time, they will come into the atrium. Because warriors will be crafted from different dimensions. That's how angels that have never walked the earth 
Some of them we visit for the first time. The Bible said, an angel stood on earth. And he said his head pierced through the cloud. So dimensions, they were not allowed. They are locked in the glory realm. But at the end of time, when they come to the earth, they will look for partners. And the kinds of men they will work with, their stature will also be of that order. He said an angel stood and called upon the birds. The moment the angel appeared, he covered the sun. And he said one third of every bird died immediately because of the energy. Ah, we are in strange times. Don't be a sacrifice. Some of the people they are killing are sacrifices to invoke dark dimensions. You don't be a sacrifice. Rather, become one of the warriors that will participate with those immortal beings. That's why equipping is too important now. Some of you hear me. You will sit in your room praying, and suddenly you will have sudden visitation. I'm telling you, that's the time, that's the season we are coming into. The same way Abraham sat at the gate of Mamre and he saw three men walking. But you need discernment to know what is going on. You will sit down in your room praying. Suddenly the war will give way. And a creature will come and say, I'm sent to you. He will salute you in the order that you represent in the spirit. The same way Mary sat down and Gabriel showed up and said, Hail Mary. Full of grace. Many visitations will begin to come to the earth. Realm. We are not disadvantaged. As darkness is growing, so dimensions of light are emanating. He said, as the darkness covers the earth, he said, so the great light of God shall appear upon his people. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon his holy mountains. That's the season. An army is about to be born. And it's to be born from the womb of the spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. Please be seated. There are many things to share. But I need to explain, establish foundations. We have not reached there. Maybe it's when we get to the month of November. I would have done a lot of basics. So we can share things. And when we share them, men, we experience them. The reason we are taking time to establish foundation is because the spirit realm is like an island. If you don't have doctrinal foundation, you can be lost. Because even dark princes can be turned into angels of light. When you see a spirit, you need to be able to, beyond the glory, look into the nature of that spirit and discern the order that that spirit represents. And it will take a lot of schooling in the spirit for that to happen. Tonight, I want to share with us something very vital. Becoming God's man. My friend, Dr. Bukola William, said he will be here. I don't know if he is already around. Okay. He may come in just to be sure. I want to honor every minister that is here. It's good to see you, my brother. How is the work going? Praise God. You're welcome. I want to share something with you and I'll try to take it precept upon precept so I don't miss anything out. Maybe towards the end I can jack up the energy a bit just to do a little bit of impartation. You know, I was teaching them in Kaduna yesterday on wielding the powers of the age to come. The requirements for wielding the powers of the age to come. The time has come for us to begin to share some of these things. And this evening, I want to share with us again. Oh man, he just walked in. Bring him to the front. Maybe I was sensing his energy. <laughs> That's Dr. Bukola Williams, seasoned servant of God. It's good to have you. You're welcome. In every generation, in every dispensation, God has men. 
on the scale of salvation, we are all equal. But when it comes to kingdom advancement, we are not the same. There are credentials that everyone that wants to be vitally used of God must carry. And until these things are factored into your being, you may be loved of God because you are his child, but you may not be used of God. Salvation has no requirement. He said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so when you realize it, accept it by believing and confessing, it becomes yours. But when it has to do with the eternal agenda of God, God has men. And when you route through scriptures, you will discover that these things have been there from time immemorial and into the future of the dispensations of God, these things will remain. This is why it's important for us to understand what it takes to be God's man. Because God loves everyone, but he's not with everyone. He's not working with everyone. Make no mistakes about it. The two major dispensations of God are allocated to men. That is to let you know what it means to be God's man. The Bible spoke in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 45. He divided the experience and the existence of men into two. The first Adam and the second Adam. He said the first Adam is of the earth and is earthy. He said the second Adam is the Lord from heaven. And he said having born the nature of the first Adam we must also bear the nature of the second Adam. That means the existence of man is factored into two dispensations. And those dispensations in the spirit are recognized as men. They are not recognized as times. One is called the first Adam. The second is called the second Adam. And in between these dispensations, there are times and there are seasons. And those times and seasons are also allocated to men. That means when you get into eternity, of course you should know this by now, that eternity is a realm that is not governed by time. So when you get into eternity, there is nothing like chronological existence. Eternity is allocated to men. And so when they want to study and discover realities that took place in the chronological time, they will not go and look for years they will look for men because men inherit years. That's why times and seasons are allocated to men. In Matthew chapter 11 verse 12, the Bible said from the times of John, he said the kingdom, he is trying to talk about the kingdom as vital as the kingdom is, but the kingdom is not allocated to 500 BC. The kingdom is not allocated to 900 BC. The kingdom is allocated to the lead functionaries that bore the burdens of God in those seasons. And so when you want to trace what God did at certain periods, you will not look for the calendar according to time. You will look for it according to the men that bore the torch of Zion. And so he said from the times of John, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And he said the violent takes it by force. So the season when force was introduced into kingdom economy, was not a BC, it was a John. And when you get into eternity, you can check through all the BCs and enter all the ADs. You will not find any purpose of God trapped in a BC or in an AD. But when you want to see the purpose of God that found expression in time, what you need to do in heaven is to open men. And so when you come to heaven and you want to find out what happened when violence was introduced into the equation of kingdom, you will waste your time looking for time. You will go and find John. And if John opens his oracles, you will find all of those realities articulated in John because he represents that dispensation. This is why it's important for everyone to contend to become a man of God. Because a man of God is not a preacher. A man of God is not a prophet. A man of God is a carrier of the essence of God to a degree that he represents a dispensation in the purposes of God. These things are so vital 
that even prophetic utterances wait for men. As powerful as prophetic words are, when God speaks, he will wait for the man that will carry it out. If not, it can happen. Because seasons are not allocated to chronology. They are allocated to men. In Genesis chapter 15 verse 12, God spoke to Abraham. He said, your children will be in captivity for 400 years. He said, then the iniquity of that nation will be full and I will take them out. They were in Egypt for 400 years. Nothing happened. God had to wait for another 30 years for Moses to rise. Because the prophecy will be null and void except a man of God arises. It's God that spoke. But the power is not in the time. The power is in the rising of the man. And so even though 400 years passed, no angel could come down from heaven to carry it out. God could not change what he has done. So heaven had to wait. So the emergence of Moses was the fulfillment of that prophecy. And if a man like that does not rise, heaven may wait for another 100 years. It shows you how divine purposes are executed. So everyone sitting here, you are not just heads. You are representations of dispensations. You are representatives of dimensions. And you are representatives of purposes in God. And there are certain purposes that if you don't carry out, God may have to wait for another 30 years. That's why beyond being a religious Christian, you must become God's man. God waited for Joseph. They were weeping and wailing. God waited. He will always wait for his men. Because his men are the carriers of his dimensions. His men are the carriers of his purposes. When you find out what God is doing on earth, it's not in a book. It's not even in a prophecy. It's in a man. Because if the man doesn't appear, the prophecy will wait. If the man doesn't appear, the principles will wait. Until the man appears, nothing works. And so while you are sitting, the question you should ask yourself is, what dispensation do I represent? What dimension do I represent? I refuse to be a man defined by blood and breath. I represent something in God. That's why I told Jeremiah, he said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I sanctified you to be a prophet unto the nations. And the dimension of the prophetic you will wrought is to uproot, to destroy, to plant, and to build. That means the emergence of nations is a product of the emergence of Jeremiah. And this is not a gender related reality. In Isaiah 7 14, the, God, the, the Lord spoke to the prophet. He said, A virgin shall give birth. And the child that virgin will give birth to will be the son of the highest. And God waited. There was no time until Mary showed up. The moment Mary appeared, the season came. That means it is men that define divine seasons. When God speaks, he's waiting for the man that will appear. Because even if God gives it timeline, if no man appears, it will remain in the spirit. And so the appearance of men is the salvation of men. The appearance of men is the salvation of generations. The appearance of men is the salvation of dispensations. Our generation needs to realize this. Listen, the reason we honor men is not an attempt to worship them. It's because we have seen that certain possibilities would have remained in the spirit except as they emerged. I hope you enjoyed this video and I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also, if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you 
in our next video and prayer section. Bye.